Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another event of the Java User Group Switzerland in collaboration with our friends from the Software Crafts Romandie. My name is Peti Koch, and I'm your host from the Java User Group Switzerland. Alex. Hello, everyone. So my name is Alex Kuva, and I represent Software Craft Romandie. And today we have the pleasure to have Marco Gonzalaro with us. Thank you very much for coming okay. and visiting our Swiss communities. Welcome, Marco. Thank you for inviting me. So we, before we start with the talk, um, let's take a quick look at some general, general information. I will present some slides. Um, uh, let's go to the beginning. Ah. Sorry, so a big thank you to our sponsors for their support first. And for you as a user to interact with us, you can use the chat. For example, write in the chat where are you from, how are how you are, what's the weather. And then, if you have a question, please use the question and ask answer tab to post your question. You have also the, the opportunity to upvote the questions, so we see which one is the most interesting. We will try to pick the questions up during the presentation and answer them. And uh, yep, <laughs> then to. Get in touch with us, with uh, Java User Group Switzerland. Uh, you can do this uh, via the Slack workspace. You see here the, the URL. You can there ask questions, or if you have idea for events, uh, just post it there, your message. We will get in touch with you. And so for uh, the software craftsmanship Romandy community, we have, uh, so if you want to keep in touch with us, we have a website uh, on Meetup. Uh, you can find us too on LinkedIn. And next page. We will record the event today and publish it later on YouTube. So you can subscribe to our channels. The, you see here the URL for the Java User Group Switzerland channel. And the same is for the Software Crafts Romandy channel. Okay. And uh, after the talk with the question and answer, um, question and answers, we will uh, redirect everyone uh, to our wonder.jock.ch spatial chat where we, where we can freely interact with each other. It's uh, voluntary, so uh, you don't have to, but we would be very glad if you join us afterwards for a free chat. Also, Marco will be there, so you can ask directly questions uh, to him and discuss uh, your ideas. Then we will have some more events. Um, yeah. to no, Alex. So, the, so the next event we will have uh, in June. Uh, in June, we'll have uh, Uncle Bob is going to come and present uh, the future of uh, programming, uh, very interesting topics. Uh, I hope that everyone, a lot is coming. We started to have already a lot of registration, so don't miss and register soon. Just Marcus post in the, on the chat the, the link for register for Uncle Bob. And then we will have a big break of two months because of the summer. We have the right to have holiday too, sometimes, speaker too. And we'll come back in September with speakers. We have already two uh, confirmed speakers. Uh, in September, we can have a live in Lausanne uh, with anyway with uh with the remote uh distance video streams uh with uh sandro mancuso because he's going to be there for giving a training and i think it's in november in october we have uh the brother of uh alessandro bolboaca we're gonna have his brothers and i forget his name adrian bolboaca yeah 
is going to present uh, pair programming in remote. There will be more events uh, from the Java User Group Switzerland side to um, keep to be informed. Just uh, subscribe to the mailing list and you will get an email whenever a new event is ready. So that's it uh, for the introduction. And I give now the word over to Marco. Thank you. <clears throat> So let's uh, talk uh, uh, this evening. The talk is about connections. Uh, the title is Connections Beyond Coupling and Cohesion, <laughs> because it's somewhat uh, a concept uh, uh, which is uh, relatively connected. Uh, here I choose uh, a painting of Van Gogh to explain connections because Conesis is a little bit uh, the uh, building blocks of uh, what we do in our code base. And like the paintings of Van Gogh, if you go close to them, you can see that uh, there's a lot of rough uh, little painting shop. It's only when you get out of the painting that you understand what the painting is. And he also, yeah. wrote that uh, with this quote, right? So Conesis is very, very uh, similar to that concept. So who am I? I am Marco Consolaro. I am uh, uh, famous for distillation, as Alex said. I'm co-author of Agile Technical Practice Distill, uh, a book that uh, is having uh, uh, quite a good uh, uh, Feedback. Uh, this is the feedback of uh, Patty Cobb that uh, read it. Uh, and we received a few awards. Uh, the last one is uh, Best New TDD Books, which is the one we like the most. Uh, and uh, uh, one of the chapters of this book is about connections. And what, what do I do? Uh, usually, I am a technical coach. I founded Alcor Academy, where we <coughs> help uh, uh, CTOs to promote a culture of excellence uh, with our innovative socio-technical training. We do a uh, uh, live mock programming training about software crafting. And it's uh, actually proving very, very uh, successful. And uh, uh, this uh, talk is actually one of the lessons that we do in our training program. Uh, of course, our training program after the theory has also a practice session where we explain in practice the uh, concept we uh, have seen in the theory. Obviously, we don't have time to do a workshop about connections here because otherwise we have to stay here until midnight. But uh, uh, the first part is uh, anyway interesting. So. Uh, when I have learned Conaisens uh, in the beginning, I uh, really, really like the uh, videos from Jim Werich about Conaisens. There's a lot of videos from him there. And that's where I uh, began to learn and understand this concept. And uh, uh, after I watched some of these videos, I wanted to reach out to him because I had a lot of questions. And I discovered that uh, he is not anymore with us. He uh, passed to another life on 2014. And uh, so I want to remember him in my talk when I do this talk. This is his last commit in GitHub. The, uh, made a little tribute to his page. Uh, and uh, Jimmy Welch was very active in the Ruby community. And uh, if you have used the uh, uh, rape file uh, to uh, build a uh, uh, script in Ruby, uh, you will use one of his tools. So uh, have a look to this talk if you uh, really like this subject. 
Connaissance. Connaissance is a word that comes from Latin. It's uh, co and nascence. Nascence comes from nascentum, which means arising young, immature. Is a present participle, participle of nasce, which means to be born. And co means together. So connaissance is the birth and growth of two or more things at the same time. So two or more elements, uh, fields, methods, classes, parameters, uh, variables, but uh, anything really, are connaissant if uh, a change in one element will require also a change in the others. And uh, 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 from this point of view, uh, the idea of connaissance is very similar to the idea of coupling. But uh, the difference is that connaissance is uh, a little bit uh, more complete in the classification. Coupling is a concept that is uh, uh, deeply uh, connected with object-oriented programming, while connaissance is a concept that is wider and uh, actually uh, as three dimension where we can assess uh, its uh, impact. We have the degree, which means the size of, it, of, of its impact, which is by the number of entities it affects. If it's small or big, uh, it changes. Then the locality, where these uh, connection elements sit, are they close together or are they far apart? and strength. As we will see, there are several types of connections and some are more strong than others. That means that are more difficult to clean and more costly to refactor. Essentially, if we put these in a diagram, eh, what connections does is it give us a direction for a factor. So we want weak kinds of connections, connections. we want uh, a locality close instead of apart, and we want a low degree instead of a high degree. I know what you are thinking. Show me some code, right? Otherwise it's all up in the air. So let's see the different kind of connections and uh, let's see it in a piece of code. So let's have a look to this class. Apparently, <clears throat> this class has no problems, right? But uh, let's see what kind of connections we can find in this little piece of code. So let's uh, focus on this name. It's Howard, right? If we change any of these, we need to change them all for our system to work. And same is for this. But also in the parameter, we have some name that uh, appear two times. Now, realize that uh, every time in your code you use a variable, it appears at least uh, two or more times, right? Because this is connections of name. And uh, <clears throat> uh, this is the uh, connections that we use all the time, right? And there is another one that is very important. For example, let's have a look of the type of this. If we change a type uh, up there in the field, we need to change it also in the parameter, right? And this is connections of type. So now these are the good kind of connections, right? In our ladder, connections of name and type are good. Actually, we should have only these kind of connections in our code. That's what makes the code easy to understand and explicit. But unfortunately, it's not as easy as it seems. Right? So let's see some other different uh, kind of connections. And these are the static kind of connections. Well, they are static in uh, a strong type language. 
in languages that are not strong type, the connections of type will move up in the non-static uh, because it's discovered only around time over there. But let's see another example, right? So we have a notificator class where we can send an email and we pass the recipient, the sender, and the message as strings, right? So when we have to use it, we have to use it like that, with three strings. Uh, at this point, we lose the uh, semantic of what these strings are. When we read this method, is address one the recipient or is it the sender? We don't know. We Without the tooltips, we will not know that. The idea here is that we have an order in the strings we pass, where the first is the recipient, the second is the sender, and the third is the message. This is an example of connections of position. Connections of position happens when multiple components must be adjacent or must appear in a particular order, often passed within a positional structure. When we pass an array with the inside the parameter, that's connections of position. How strong is it? Well, it is quite strong. It's the strongest of the static kind of connections. Uh, this one is uh, uh, pretty simple to clear, right? Here, we can just uh, create some type for a recipient, a sender, and a message. And now we have the type that uh, identify the parameter, not more, not the position anymore. What we did here, we solved connections of position using connections of name and type. An alternative way would be to have a notification class, for example, where we can set up uh, fluently like uh, in a builder. Right? And also this one uses connections of name and type to fix. The connection of position is not always particularly bad. It is very, very bad when it has a high degree. So, for example, if we have a tuple and we have a process order, we have just two of this item. And uh, it's not nice, it's not readable, but uh, our mind uh, with one or two items can still understand. If we have a lot, have uh, a big, big confusion. This is conditions of degree five, conditions of position of degree five, you see, very, very bad. And when we have to use it, right, what the hell is that? When we call it like this, it's like uh, we have lost uh, any meaning of that stuff, right? I'm like, oh my God, what is that? Right? So here is uh, an example where the high degree uh, makes things very, very unreadable. The, the good thing about connaissance is that uh, focusing on coupling, it uh, actually solves problem of semantic and understandability on your code. So let's see a different kind now, right? Let's uh, go back to our example and uh, uh, see why this uh, little class is a little bit weird, right? So what happened? if we instantiate it like this. Well, that's not a valid time, right? This is, uh, this is not a valid time. That should be an invalid state. So this is uh, an example of connections of value. Connections of value happen when two or more components values are related or have an intrinsic range of validity in their input, not expressed by their primitive type. In this class, so how, how strong is this one? This one is pretty strong. Connections of value is one of the strongest. And this class 
The class must participate in the information flow if and only if it has a valid state. So here, as a bare minimum, we need to validate, right? And throw if it's not uh, acceptable. So this is a <coughs> bare minimum requirement. Can we do better? Of course, because if we introduce some enumeration, for example, where we enforce only the valid values, we actually make invalid state unrepresentable. And we solve connaissance of value using connaissance of name and type. So we are back with a weak form of connaissance. Let's see another example. Here is an example that uh, it happens sometimes in the uh, in the pages, uh, right? Uh, let's uh, let's suppose we have a checkbox where we ask how people uh, travel to go to the office. Well, of course, I made this talk before the uh, pandemic, so uh, we used to go still in the office at that time, right? So and uh, we have a controller that then uh, take those uh, arbitrary values that we assign to the different uh, kind of transport and call the correct method, right? One is bike, two is car, three is train, four is bus. Well, this is a connaissance of meaning or convention. We basically uh, put there a convention where one, two, three, and four has a special meaning in this context but this meaning has not uh, been explicit anywhere. So we have connections of meaning or convention when two or more components must agree on the meaning of specific values, hence using a convention. How strong is this one? Well, it's not uh, very strong, <clears throat> but uh, the thing is that it is very easy to clean, right? We can just declare a constant where we can actually explicitly bind the value to our uh, <clears throat> meaningful statement and uh, as magic uh, using connaissance of name and type we don't have uh, connaissance of <clears throat> uh, convention anymore. let's see another one uh, uh, and this one is a uh, uh, very very interesting uh, this is a checksum algorithm, right? Where we add uh, a number at the end, uh, which uh, uh, will return zero in modulus 10, or right? in modulo 10. So how is it implemented? Well, we have another checksum, and then we have a check, right? But here, what happened is that we encoded the same algorithm into different methods, right? And by the way, this is a divergent change cause map, right? Because if we change the algorithm on one side, we have to go and change the also on the other side every time. This is connaissance of algorithm. <coughs> connaissance of algorithm when two or more components must agree on using a particular algorithm. Now, this is very, very useful when we have to check if the file we download from somewhere has been tampered, right? Because we can then be sure that the file is the same once we apply the algorithm in that file. But in our code, that's just hiding information, right? So, this so algorithm goes there in the static form of connections. And also, this one is pretty, pretty easy to clean, right? We just need to encapsulate the algorithm, in this case, is in a method, but it can be in its own class, right? And so, using connections of name and type, we still can fix it. And now, let's see some uh, of the dynamic form of connections, which are not as uh, straightforward. For example, in this class, uh, we send to customer a receipt and then archive it. But the problem is that if we invert and archive the receipt 
the receipt before to send it is gonna throw an exception because it's not allowed to call something after we are called. If we have something like this, this is connaissance of execution order. Connaissance of execution order happens when the caller of a component must have some unexpressed knowledge about the correct order of the methods to be called. So when we design our interfaces, we need to be careful because if there is a special order on those methods, the user of our interface cannot know that there is an order to respect. Hence, uh, there might be unpredictable behavior if the order is incorrect. That's a, a very, very a bad kind of connaissance. In effect, it goes up over there. And let's see, for example, the builder pattern. The builder pattern is very, very uh, connected to this concept, right? So uh, a builder pattern needs to be set up with some methods before we call the build. So the build pattern has connections of execution order expressed by convention. And now we use the pattern in a certain way. And if we do it well, we can call build without calling anything else. And that build a default version, right? But still there is an idea of a order of methods to be executed in a certain way. So here the idea is, uh, can we uh, enforce the order of execution somehow? If we want, can we do it? And the answer is yes, of course we can do it. We can use interface segregation. So for example, we can have a, a interface broken down like with our build cards with brand and that return our build card with engine. So that wants an engine and then return a build card with color. And that wants a color and then return the, the I build cards that has only the build which return the concrete. So we can implement these interfaces and uh, use a factory method to return the uh, builder uh, on the interface that we want. And so, now we can call it like this, new it uh, return an IB card with brand. We can only call with engine and then we can only call with color. And then we have the builder, we can only call build and the car will be returned. We remove connections of execution order using connections of name and type. Let's see another one. This one is uh, uh, is something that happens uh, often, especially when we use message system, right? Events. Thread slip 1000. How many times we debate about this, right? We find thread slip in our test, an arbitrary amount, because we are waiting for something asynchronous happening, right? This is, uh, you know, before knowing about connections, I always felt that was bad, right? Because it gives space for a flaky test. What is 1,000? 1,000 is just an arbitrary value. Sometimes it's enough, sometimes no. It's just a number we put there, but it's not uh, really deterministic for our test. And it always felt bad, but before learning about connections, I never have a way to express why this is bad. While this is a by the books example of connections of timing. Connections of timing happen when the success of two or more calls depend on the timing of when they occur. And uh, this is uh, very bad for a simple reason. We are not in control of time. And so if we are not in control of time, uh, we uh, assessing a moment in time is always very, very uh, random. And uh, random is not good for uh, tests that are not flaky. 
So, how bad it is? It is bad, it goes up there. And uh, how can we fix it? It's not uh, very easy to fix. Uh, many times uh, we need to be uh, a little bit uh, smart with this. And uh, many times we have this kind of connection because perhaps we test too close to the infrastructure layer and we might want to uh, redesign the way we test. Uh, but uh, so sometimes, uh, you know, redesigning things like this uh, is not really possible because it will take a lot of time. So uh, this is an example from a real, uh, real code I used to work in the past. Here we had this uh, 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 message handler that uh, uh, we were testing. So uh, the idea was to uh, make the handler to raise an event when uh, the message arrived. So in this way, I eliminate the connections of time for the happy path, which was the vast majority of the test, right? The problem there it was that the majority of tests were waiting one second each to prove something because of this delay. Uh, but having an event set in the handler just to tell that a message arrived allowed us to spin up and uh, to speed up and improve all the happy path tests that were a lot. And we just have a few that uh, tested the unhappy path. At that point, uh, the unhappy path had to wait the timeout in order to uh, succeed. Uh, so in the unhappy path, uh, uh, the conditions of time was still there, but we improved the uh, speed a lot. Another way to do this uh, and uh, to improve these uh, uh, conditions of time is to uh, have a, a delay configurable. So if it is configurable in your test, you can uh, make it very, very small and prove that uh, even with a very small interval, the happy and the unhappy part work correctly. And then in production, you can configure it to a value that is good for production. That is not uh, cleaning the connection of time, is just to make it less impactful in the test, but the connection of time is still there. And so let's see uh, another one, which is uh, uh, quite uh, quite bad uh, as well. Uh, and this is, uh, uh, this is a singleton, uh, old fashionable singleton, pattern or anti-pattern for uh, for some, right? Uh, it's a counter that count the instances uh, and uh, every controller uh, increment the counter, right? Uh, but this work correctly if and only if we pass the same instance to all the controllers, right? This is coordination of identity. And it's uh, uh, it happens when one or more components must reference exactly one particular instance of another entity and this is a little bit the reason why many why many people uh, used to say the singleton is an antipater because it is uh, there to guarantee collisions of identity how bad it is it's uh, considered very bad it goes there almost on top of the dynamic form of connections and uh, uh, and it is very difficult to clean, right? Uh, the best way to uh, clean something like that is to redesign the system and perhaps have a counter that is uh, uh, detached. And uh, uh, so we can send messages synchronously and that counter will just collect the message and uh, sum it up. And uh, uh, that will result in a much more decoupled system. Uh, but uh, in the top, another kind of connaissance, uh, which uh, is not uh, uh, in, uh, in the book, uh, uh, neither in the talk of Jimmy Weirich, because uh, while we were writing this chapter, something happened to me. And uh, actually, we, 
uh, added another kind of connections, which we think is even worse. Worse than this kind, and uh, it was a new message uh, to create. We needed to emit a new message for some other teams to uh, subscribe to, and uh, I implemented everything in my machine, created a new message, created everything, tested the uh, integration test, everything worked, and then when we deploy the code in the integration environment, in the integration environment, it didn't work. And it was strange because everything was fine, was set up. So even the oldest member of the team could not understand. And so he started to dig, to, to look into it. And after a while, he discovered, he was like, oh, now I know I forgot something. Basically, Every time they had to raise a new event, they had to change the building script and add something in the building script in the CI CD in order to allow the system to manage a new event. So basically, they were able to couple their code base with tasks to do outside the code base, right? It's basically the opposite of what we do a software engineer. We want to automate everything in order to use the machine as much as possible. And in that team, they were able to couple their code to the building script, so to things even outside their code. And so this one for us is connaissance of manual tasks. When expanding the functionality of your code, require tasks to be executed outside the code base. So manual and connections of manual task go up at the top for us because it's the anti-software engineering uh, idea. So add enough manual tasks and teams will spend more time trying to make things work, fidgeting with scripts and configuration than actually fo focusing on writing well-designed code. Who say so? I say so. Sometimes I like to quote myself. That's uh, in our book. So, to wrap it up, it's all about the design, as my friend Pedro Santos says. We know the past, but cannot control it. We control the future, but cannot know it. This is a very nice and also uh, uh, interesting uh, sentence of Claude Shannon, the, uh, the, this, the one that discovered entropy in information systems. But uh, in uh, software development, it is not uh, uh, strictly true because uh, uh, we can control also the past. It's called refactoring. And uh, the idea is that if we care about the design, if we know uh, what a good design look like and how to achieve it, if we know how to use the concept of connaissance, coupling, cohesion, solid principles, but a lot of other uh, things, uh, we can actually keep our design in a good state, even in the long term. And actually, we can refactor more often. We can refactor continuously. So that with time, we actually discover uh, the domain and adapt our code to the domain in order to actually get better and better in adding functionality. While if we have a bad design, we refactor just a few times and those refactoring attempts are never so effective. They are just a way to try to carry on uh, and uh, try to maintain our code, but the effectiveness goes down and down <clears throat> with a bad design. And here, uh, for the past, when we 
analyze some code that uh, we wrote. We have uh, several metrics and analytics, right? Coupling, cohesion, connaissance, design, and code smells. They are all things that tell us if uh, what we wrote is uh, has some problem, is good or bad, or and how. And for the the new code that we write for inspiration when we have to write something that is not there yet, we have principles, we have object calisthenics rule, we have four elements of simple design idea. We have these guidance coming from the principle that should allow us to don't make the mistakes. But uh, the idea is that all these things are somewhat connected. They are not things that one uh, that are unrelated to each other. Uh, so let's see this code, right? So here we have long parameter list code smell, but it is also connections of position. It doesn't have single responsibility because it generates the other ID. It has low cohesion. We have data coupling, primitive obsession, right? But if we clean connections of position, we now have just connections of name and time. We clean everything of these <clears throat> in just cleaning uh, connections of position or uh, even cleaning one of the other will force us to clean them all because the uh, all these ideas are expressing the same fundamental problem of this code what we think is that all these things are related because what we are trying to minimize is actually the entropy of the system. Entropy as the degree of disorder in them. So all these uh, rules, uh, all these principles, all these uh, knowledge, uh, it's uh, actually meant uh, uh, to achieve this, to have a low entropy system. So I close, learn the rule like the pro, so you can break them like an artist. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. Um, <laughs> Alex, also coming back. You're still muted, Alex. Ah. <laughs> so, do you have questions for Marco? Please use the questions and answers tab. At the moment, there is not a single question. So, let's wait a couple of seconds if someone has a, se uh, has a question. Um, Damian, no questions. <laughs> I see Damian in the chat. In the meantime, um, Marco, who came up first with the concept of, of connaissance? Yes, I, I can show you the, the first mention of connaissance was from this book, Mailer Page Jones. What every programmer should know about object-oriented design. Uh, Jimmy Weirich called it uh, pretentious as a title. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know if uh, look, there is a session about connaissance, which is the first uh, uh, mentioning of connaissance. This book is on the... Is, was written in the 90s, is uh, 1995. Okay, thank you very much. Damir has, had, has a question in the chat. Can you achieve good design only with connaissance or just with connaissance? Without? I will say yes. Mm -hmm. I will say yes. Uh, of course, uh, uh, no, you, you could achieve a good design even only with uh, coupling or even only with cohesion. Right? If you know exactly 
how to make everything cohesive, uh, then you will have a great system, right? It's uh, uh, the, the, the thing is that, uh, uh, and even, even speaking with other uh, programmer, uh, everyone has his own main uh, concept that drives what it does. And uh, uh, for example, speaking with Sandro Mancuso, you can, you can ask him uh, if you want. I was like, uh, do you have something you consider before? I say, yes, I, I focus on cohesion. I, he says, others focus on other things. Uh, so it, it doesn't really matter which one uh, you choose. Uh, as far as you exactly know uh, the concept and how to apply that concept in contexts, and then the design will come out correct. So it's not uh, which one we choose. Uh, I, uh, for me, cognizance is very, very useful, especially in some situation where there's uh, uh, no other way to explain why something is, uh, uh, is, is bad, right? Why something it doesn't uh, express some problem, which uh, which might be hidden if you don't know the idea of connaissance. Uh, it's funny because uh, uh, there was an interview on uh, uh, to Kant Beck about connaissance. So they say, uh, what do you think about connaissance? And they say, oh, uh, there is already a name of connaissance, it's called coupling. So I don't care about connaissance. Uh, but I think he, uh, he didn't, uh, he didn't look into some uh, ideas of connaissance, which goes uh, outside the mere code base, right? Uh, connaissance of timing. Connaissance of time is something that uh, uh, it's clearly uh, a thing we find many times that it's difficult to deal with, which it doesn't have a coupling thing because. Uh, there's no coupling with time, right? Time is time. Uh, so uh, I think the concept of connaissance, uh, it's uh, very powerful, especially at a high level. Okay, so, so we got some questions. One is from Alvaro. Is con connaissance an actual metric like code coverage or technical depth? Is there any tool that permits to extract this metric from code so that we can use it to pinpoint uh, where? I, 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 I don't think uh, it's uh, yeah, possible. Let's say the, 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 best, uh, the best tool you can use for connaissance is the compiler. Because the compiler tells if connaissance of name and type uh, is correct. It means that uh, there's a problem in connections of name and type. And then every other uh, connection is, uh, uh, is very, uh, it's not uh, just about the code, it's about the meaning, it's about how the code must be used. So for example, connections of execution order, when you need to call the methods in a certain order, how can you have a tool that check that, right? That's a, there are some dynamic form of connections that are not uh, uh, investigable by a tool, right? Uh, uh, it's, uh, and that is what makes the concept powerful because uh, it has some ideas uh, that uh, sneak into our code base, but that are orthogonal to our code base. So how can you talk about that? How can you express a relationship like that? Perfect, thank you, Marco. So I think we covered all the questions and I think we will move on to the spatial chat. I'll post the link uh, also here in the big market chat. So you will all be redirected uh, uh, as soon as we finish the webinar. And then we will meet up on the WonderMe platform. So thank you very much. Alessandro has arrived. Uh, Alessandro Di Gioia, my co-author, is going to be there as well. Perfect. So thank you very much, everyone, for coming. And uh, see you next time or see you right now in the WonderMe chat. Bye-bye. Thank you. See you there.